Welcome, welcome, Steele and Vance in the Czech Vancouver studios. And next week, it'll feel later when we're doing this. That's because you have to spring ahead on Sunday. Here's your early heads up. I know a lot of people don't like doing that one. And remember, it was 2019 when John Horgan passed legislation saying, we're not doing this anymore. And we're still doing it. We're still doing it. It's I, the Americans. They need to get on board. Let's stop changing the clocks. It's just it does drive everybody crazy. Almost as much as it drives our good friend Drex crazy when you say daylight savings time. It's, it's, a, it's a funny thing. that It's an ism that some people have. It's like it's Patty's Day, not Patty's Day. Also, I get that from my Irish friends at the beginning of March. Yeah. Well, the stickler so for the many things to worry about, like stickler. daylight saving. All right. See, so, you nailed it. I always do. There right? Okay, go. so we also have a gift certificate to give away tonight. Our viewing party. This is an extra special Romers gift card for $100 because Romers just opened a location in Lynn Valley. Like literally just days ago opened in Lynn Valley. So North Shore Romers, $100 gift card viewing party. Same drill. You just take a picture, tell us where you are, send it in to viewing party at checkmedia.ca. We have a ton of stuff on the show today. Uh, I know it seems a little bit early, but a lot of people are sounding the alarm about the wildfire season coming up in BC. We had a terrible year last year. The premier says he's profoundly concerned yeah. and he's squirreled away about $10 billion. So we're gonna talk to a local author of the bestseller, Fire Weather, John Valiant. Uh, this guy knows what he's talking about and has been writing for the New York Times about all the climate disasters yeah, around the world. Yeah, he's really done his due diligence diligence and he writes the cautionary tale and is very learned about what we might expect moving forward. <laughs> what do you expect for Oscar night? That's also fun. Dana G is back again to help us to note as well. Oscars are starting early this week. Jimmy Kimmel is your host. There's Dana G. Given, yeah, given so, Oscar you know, picks. if you don't care about the movies, there's lots of fun stuff with the outfits and maybe there'll be some political speeches. Maybe you're doing a pool. Dana can help with that. Totally can. And now it's time for... Hot headlines. So many people are so frustrated about um, people like repeat sex offenders who continue to get into the glue. And this happened again with a Kelowna, yep. where um, a repeat sex offender was allowed to go into an equestrian, equestrian center where he allegedly mm, kind of did some inappropriate sexual things with an 11 year old while the person who was supposed to be watching him was sitting outside in the car for two and a half hours. And there was no warning that he was back in the community either. This is just, it feels like we have talked about this on every single episode. What this should be in what there's the a is disconnect there between a disconnect. police and between the courts and bail and all the rest of it. Nobody's happy about it. No laws should be upheld and those who break the laws should be held to account to the to the nth degree, frankly, especially on these repeat cases. It just makes us crazy. Especially when it's a sexual assault and you're putting them right in the heart of a big area where there's a ton of children. And when they talked to the people who run the equestrian center, they said, we didn't know we had a sex offender who was taking lessons in here. That's not okay. It is not okay. Also, many would say not okay is returning a business license to the mushroom dispensaries of Dana Larson. What Vancouver City Hall handed it back. Well, there were the two green councillors yeah. said, you know, everybody's getting into microdose thing, and so we're going to get on that path. And I'm saying, do you remember what happened when you just let people sell cannabis before it was legal? It turned into a you know what? And that exact same thing is going to happen here because Dana Larson's. Um, mushroom dispensary is going to be the first in Canada that's actually got a business license and it's illegal and it sells LSD too. So if we're a rule of law country, then let's have one set of laws and let's obey them until we change the law. I agree with you on the fact that if it's the law, should we be handing out business licenses to businesses that break the law? I think the answer to that is a simple no. If if the laws need to evolve more quickly, that's another conversation to be had. I but think I do remember political. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question. But I do remember, as you were pointing out, when the cannabis stores popped up literally everywhere, and the kids couldn't sell lemonade at the park. It's like. The other thing, too, is there's no oversight. No. How do you know what is being sold in a mushroom dispensary? How do you know the efficacy of your LSD if it's too much, if it's tainted? I mean, we don't know because no. nobody is in control. We're, so that learning. makes me a bit nutty. 
Here we go again. Uh, here we go again. We'll, we'll stay on it for you. Um, some research now about an association between cannabis and heart issues. This is big. P make note. A lot of cannabis users are saying poo-pooing this, but what they're finding is that if you're a daily cannabis user, and they don't specify if you're smoking or edibles or however you're ingesting it, that you have a 25% increased risk of a heart attack and a 42% increased risk of a stroke. Those are big numbers. Really big numbers. How are they poo-pooing that? Well, you know? because they don't want it to be true. Well, oh, well, what about alcohol? Yes, there are. For sure. You know, but we know more about the harms of alcohol than we do about cannabis because we haven't studied it. Yeah. We're just starting to see results. Speaking of things we know, we know that getting vaccinated against measles eradicated measles until people stopped vaccinating. And now we have these problems all over the world. In the EU, it's a big problem. In Florida, it's a big problem. And now BC has a confirmed case. And they're saying that they're not even seeing a lot of it tracked to travel, which means there's local transmission. Measles is the most contagious virus on the planet. Yes. So we're in trouble, folks. And get your head out of the, you know where, if you're still thinking, oh, I don't think I, my kids need to be vaccinated. If you're listening to the, what's that actress's name? Oh, um, Jenny McCarthy? Yeah. yeah. Don't, no, don't. no, no, no. That was Listen debunked. to your in doctor. A... Talk to your family doctor. Indeed. And to note, I spoke with Dr. Henry, our good friend, Dr. Henry here on the program. Um, talked to her earlier this week about measles. And one stat that she shared, you said it's the most infectious. Put it in your heads. COVID? A positive for COVID would would transmit to two people. Measles, 13. That's how quickly it spreads, and it hangs in the air hours after you're in a room. This is this is the real deal. So if you have not had two doses of vaccine, you should go get yourself protected and please vaccinate your and kids. And spring break is coming up. Oh my and gosh, if you're planning yeah. on getting on a plane and not even making sure your kids are vaccinated, then you're a bad parent. I'm just saying that. There you um, go. We can we talk about a guest that we had on the show a month or so ago, yeah. Selena Robinson was the post-secondary minister. She got into trouble for saying something about Israel being founded on a crappy piece of land, quote unquote. Then she got pushed out of cabinet. Now she said, you know, heck with it. I'm just resigning. I'm going to sit as an independent. She's not going to run again. Should be noted that Selena Robinson is Jewish. Yeah. Important. And piece of that. She's yeah. now, she's written a four-page letter saying that there's a lot of people in the NDP caucus who have said anti-Semitic things and have not supported her. And then today, the conservative leader said that David Eby, the premier, should resign because he has an anti-Semitism problem. And I'm thinking, mm, but conservatives should think about the problems they have in their own caucus. But yeah. anyway, this, this is, a story is that's, not ending. This is not going away anytime soon. Um, Neither is the park board brouhaha <laughs> if you're uh, in Vancouver or even really this has become a provincial problem because ultimately the premier is going to need to make a decision on whether the Vancouver charter gets changed or not. Uh, Mayor Ken Sim of Vancouver wants to get rid of the park board. Well, now the First Nations, the Musqueam, the Squamish and the Tsleil-Waututh have u a unified front with Mayor Ken Sim and wanting to get rid of the park board. And they also have their reasons because they want to make sure that the charter aligns with UNDRIB. Uh, and, and so they want more say. It makes sense. But it it's probably an unhappy thing to read in the newspaper for all the people who are not ABC Park Board commissioners who are desperately unhappy about this decision to get rid of the park board. It's so another story. Another that unending drama that we'll keep, keep you covered. Let's show this video of over YVR uh, on Sunday. Uh, look at this. Watch this happen. Rare to catch this on film. Well, film. Show my age. Wow. Ooh. That plane was apparently did not have to turn around, nope. was not damaged. It was OK. But how scary would that be if you're the pilot like buzz, buzz, buzz. You know, you would think you would feel that somehow. Oh, if you'd the hear plane, the crack. Was it direct? Yeah, you'd hear the crack in the plane for sure. But planes are built to withstand that. So we wanted to show it because it was such a rarity and it happened right here. <laughs> and when we talk about planes being built to withstand things, they're also not supposed to have doors blow off mid-flight, as which happened with the Alaska flight and that uh, Boeing situation. And now three of the passengers on that flight are suing Boeing um, <laughs> for, for a billion, billion dollars. dollars, which to me seems it's too litigious. Yeah. I mean, nobody was hurt. There was some minor injuries, I think. For sure, terrifying PTSD, yeah, all the rest of it. Forever changed. Not right, yeah. but starting at a billion. billion. Yeah, maybe seems that's so that they can hopefully dial greedy. it back to 10 million. It does seem greedy. Well, then maybe it seems starting outrageous. at 100 million. It seems outrageous. So, so do the baggage fees. You just went to Hawaii. Did it cost you a fortune to get your bags on? Uh, no, but that's because we got on before WestJet <laughs> increased there the fees. You go. 
I think that what they should do is bring the fees down for baggage and make people who do carry on, the wheelie carry on, yeah, yeah. make them pay the same fee that you're paying. Because it's a convenience to have your bag go in the thing so you can just pull it out and take off. So you should also pay for that because there are people who are being held up, it delays boarding. How could you complain about it if everyone's paying a little bit less and you have to pay a little bit more for that convenience? I would go the other way and say, if I'm paying for my bag to go underneath, I want to guarantee that it's going to meet me at the other end because I'd have no problem checking all my luggage if I knew it would arrive with me. My reason yeah, but, for squirreling everything up top is because it doesn't... how many times have you flied and your luggage didn't arrive? Twice. Really? Yeah. I think it's happened to me once in my life. And I get it. It's a problem and it was a problem over COVID and what have you. I just think that, yeah, uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a problem and they're coming for your carry-on next because other airlines are starting to look at charging for carry-on. So one way or the other, they're going to get your bucks. We're going to have to leave like 10 headlines on the cutting room floor yeah. because we got to get to the show because later in the show, we're ready for Oscar night. Dana G coming to help you win your pool. And up next, BC's Premier is profoundly worried about the upcoming fire season. Last year's Okanagan wildfires were a disaster. Are we in for more of the same? Author of the award-winning book, Fire Weather, John Valiant joins us next. You have got to stay tuned for that. You also need to get in on our viewing party. This is fun stuff. We say hello to Anne in South Surrey. Hello. We have Bill and Dave in Nanaimo. Hello, guys. Hey, gents. And Bob in Victoria. Hi, Bob. Our male viewers and our female viewers too, Cheryl and Comox. Thank you all for watching. And get in on it right now. Take a picture of you watching us. Tell us where you're from. Email us viewingparty at checkmedia.ca, brought to you by the BC Restaurant and Food Services Association.